G'day, I'm Gary Pye. The introduction videos that I do to my characters are to help you get the best results when working with these characters, whether it's animating them or whether you're using them as static images. These videos are designed to show you the intricacies of working with these characters because nowadays some of my characters have so much involved in them that you can do thanks to using all of the features and tools that are available to us from Cartoon Animator. There's so much that you can do. If you're a new person just working with Cartoon Animator, you might not even know about it. If you've been working with Cartoon Animator for ages, maybe you've overlooked it. So these videos are designed to show you how to work best with specific characters. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get best results from my new 2D's character, Melvin. So let's get over to Cartoon Animator now and I'll show you how to get best results from Melvin. When you first load Melvin to screen, this is what he looks like. Uh, first of all, let's just take his sunglasses off him so that we can see his eyes. Using the face key editor, we'll just take the sunglasses off. We'll come back to the sunglasses later, but for now, we'll just turn them off. Melvin is a vector-based character. That means we can zoom in on this character as far as we want. And you'll see down in the corner here that you'll get the little notification to say when it's vectorized. And you can see he's got nice, sharp edges on him. So regardless of how far in you want to come, how far you want to zoom to the character, you're always going to get great results from vector-based characters. Um, now... Melvin also has spring bones, but he has very short hair. So when you move him around, his hair only moves a little bit, which is good. I mean, that's really all you want from this character. With characters like Jane with long flowing hair, uh, yeah, you want the hair moving everywhere. With Melvin, we don't want that. When he moves his head from side to side, you get a nice subtle motion. If he moves his head fast in any direction, you'll see that it moves a little bit more. Nice dynamic movement that just adds another layer of um, acting to the character, which I love. We also have facial puppetry built in to Melvin. If we open the face key editor and we have the morph tab selected, you can select any part of the face, say for instance the eyes, and then when we click on the outside and hold our left mouse key, when we click on the outside and have the left mouse button clicked down, you can move his eyes around, and you can do this with any part of his face. Deselect the eyes, select his eyebrow, now we can move that. This will give you, again, when you, when you close up on animation, this is going to give you a lot nicer, smooth transitions from one gesture to another, and the difference is amazing. You can also control these from the detail settings on the templates pad, if we open the detail settings, if we go to the eye, you can get some really nice movement and facial expressions in here um, using these sliders. They, they work for the brow, the eye, the nose, the mouth. If we, if we select the mouth, you can have it, look at that. Instead of having to swap from one mouth sprite to another, you can actually transition nice and slowly from one to the other. Makes, makes a massive difference. Let's reduce those back to where they start because now I need to show you what I'm really here to show you about, Melvin, and that is sprite swapping and color management. This is where this character is unique. With Melvin, you'll see that he's wearing his T-shirt over the top of his long sleeve shirt and then he has his pants and sneakers on. But we can change the outfits that Melvin's wearing. Not just the colours, but also the clothing options that he's actually wearing. Let me demonstrate. If we open the SVG colour adjustment, you'll see that we have two folders, clothing and body. Inside each of these, we have a number of other folders that control each individual element of the different parts of this character. So for instance, if we go to the short sleeve shirt, which will start to blink because it's highlighted, if we change the hue, we can change 
the overall color of the shirt to be whatever we want. But if we open up that folder, you'll see you have different options within this folder, including trim, sleeve, torso, and logo. Each of these folders controls a smaller section of this element, the t-shirt. So if we pick the sleeve and we increase the brightness on the sleeve, well then we can change just the sleeves without affecting the torso. If you select the logo and reduce the opacity to zero, you can make it disappear altogether. In fact, another thing that you can do is to take the short sleeve shirt, reduce its opacity and make it so it's translucent, almost like a plastic material or um, like, like a, a mater material, like a veil or something like that. So there's a lot of options there. But if we want to take the t-shirt off him completely, reduce its op opacity to zero, and now you can see his long sleeve shirt underneath. So we have a second option for clothing. Again, if we choose the long sleeve folder, we can change the hue of the long sleeve folder, or you can change individual elements of it, like the sleeve, the torso, and the trim. But what if we want to take the jumper off him? Can we do that? With Melvin, yes, we can do that. We can take the jumper off him and leave him naked from the waist up. To do that, obviously, all we have to do is reduce the opacity of the jumper down to zero. But when we do, you're going to see something weird happen. Watch. We reduce the jumper's opacity down to zero, the tops of his arms disappear. Now the reason for that is because the arms have multiple sprites. And if we open up our sprite editor and select an arm, you can see we have three different sprites. Normal, short sleeve, or naked. Because he doesn't have any clothing on, if we select the naked sprite, everything's back to normal and we're good to go. Working with the pants works in a similar fashion. Let's say we want to take Melvin's pants off. All we have to do is go to the SVG editor, select the clothing, first of all. You can turn his belt off individually, but then go to his pants. Just like normal, we can change the, the color of the pants by changing the hue slider. We can do that. But what if we want to take his pants off? Now, if you go to the sprite, for the torso, you'll see there's only one sprite for the torso. The reason for this is because we want this character to be able to bend from the midsection. And if we have multiple sprites in a character, only the first sprite can bend in the middle. Any other sprites that you have will show up, but they won't bend. And we need him to be able to bend while he's just wearing his underwear, okay? And to do that, we go into the SVG editor, go to the clothing, go to the pants. Now, when we make the pants invisible, what's going to happen when we reduce the opacity to zero, what's going to happen is his legs will disappear because his leg sprites are showing the jeans. So we reduce the opacity to zero. Now we can see his underwear, but his legs have disappeared. Simple enough. All we need to do is go to the leg sprites. There's four of them, two for, the sh uh, two for each leg, the thigh and the shank for each leg. Select your, select your sprite. Make sure that you select the naked sprite for that one. Now, we're down to just his underwear. You can also take the shoes off Melbourne. And all you need to do to do that is again, swap sprites because both feet have multiple sprites. We've got the shoe or we've got the barefoot. On the left foot, we've got the shoe and the barefoot with three of each because we've got forward facing, camera facing, reverse facing. So it depends which one you want to use. What's interesting is forward facing and reverse facing, the ankle looks fine. But on this one, the forward facing one, the ankle doesn't look right. That's easy fixed. The reason it doesn't look right is because the shank sprite, which has the ankle on it, the shank sprite is sitting on top of the foot sprite. All we need to do is change the order. If we go down to the layer editor, this shows the order in which all of the layers of your character sit. 
Okay, so as you can see, the left foot is sitting behind the left shank. We want it to sit in front of the left shank. All you need to do is to select the foot, come up and press Sent to Front. But now we need to select the sprite that we want to send it in front of. And in this case, that is the left shank. And when I click it, the left foot is now in front of the left shank and it just looks much better. The ankle isn't turned in. I think it looks a lot better. Now, another thing that we have built into Melvin that's a little bit different is the face shadow on, side, on each side of his face. What I've done here is I've put them in their own group so that when you go to skin and you come down to skin side shadow, you'll find two folders left and right. Because if, like me, you don't want the shadow on his face to be that dark and that sort of, um, that defined an edge, you can just reduce its opacity and you'll get, particularly on the one on the right, you'll get a lot smoother, there we go, a lot smoother blend with the side of your face. But I really, I really like the, the shadowing on the side of the face because it gives Melvin this really nice uh, jawline and cheekbone. And what happens is when you're rotating the head, the shadow just makes the head look a little bit more three-dimensional, I feel. So that's the reason for that. One other thing that's built into Melvin, which is a little bit unusual, is one extra sprite for his eyebrow. And I will show you. I'll just turn off the head gizmo. Okay, we have Melvin's eyebrow, but then we also have the LI dark. And what that is, is it's a small shape that looks like that, that's underneath the eyebrow that connects to the nose bridge. And just on close-ups, it gives Melvin's face a little bit more elasticity and makes it look like his eyes are recessed more. So for instance, when we select the eyebrow and we raise it up, you'll see that this eye dark sprite moves with it and it just makes the recess of his eye a little bit more convincing. Now, the reason that I point this out is because there is one place where this doesn't work and it's easy fixed, but if you don't know it, you don't know it. So. If we go into the template settings and we open the detail settings, okay, and we move across here to the brow. At the, this is where we're raising the brow up and down. If we raise the brow up, well and good. But if we rotate the brow, you'll notice that the bottom section, because it's the child to the parent, which is a brow, it's going to move with it. There's nothing I can do about that. But we don't like it. You've got two options. Turn it off altogether. Don't worry about it. It's not going to make that much a difference to the character. But if you're like me and you like to have that extra little bit of shadow there, the easiest thing to do is to go to your deform tab. Okay. Select the LI dark and using the points on the lattice, just pull it back into shape to where you want it to be. And all is good in the world. So that's basically it for the extra little features on Melvin, except for one, I nearly forgot, I told you I'd show you the glasses. Let's put Melvin's glasses back on for a second. There we go. When Melvin first loads to screen, he loads with his glasses on, okay? But they're opaque, you can't see through them. You might want to see through them, looks a lot better if you can. So if we go to the glasses folder in the color adjustment and open it up, you've got three folders for different separate parts of the glasses. You've got the lens, the frame, and the reflection. By clicking on the frame, you can change the color of the frame, do whatever you want. That's all well and good. We can change the contrast, the brightness, fabulous. With the lens, at the moment, as I said, it's opaque. We can't see through it. But by changing the opacity of just the lens, well, now we can see through it. That means that we can have the opacity reduced to almost clear, like reading glasses, or darker 
like sunglasses. You can even change the color of the lens by going in to the palette, selecting a different color, and you can get yourself some nice Elton John style glasses. But you'll notice that when you lighten the glasses, that the reflection on the glasses is too dark. Easy fixed. Select them, increase their brightness, reduce their opacity, and now when Melvin moves his head around, the glasses have that really nice translucent effect and you can even you can even see his eyes through the the reflection on the glasses I and mean, that's this is what cartoon animator 5 can do now it's just got some really really cool stuff in there now before i go let's load up one last version of melvin because it's nice to show you all the features but if you've never worked with my characters before odds are you're wondering okay yeah but do they move okay do they, what happens when you move them do they animate right yeah they really do let's take the glasses off again because i don't know it's just me i like melvin i put the glasses on as an extra feature but i like melvin without the glasses let's open our content manager and go to our motions go down to the cartoon motions pack which is my favorite pack and if you do a lot of animation you should own this pack it's the best pack in all of the reillusion store in my opinion um, now to apply motions hopefully you know this by now but if you don't i will show you each motion has three different variations s l and e that stands for start loop and end so if we take the double bounce and we drag and drop it onto melvin oh the glasses pop back on that doesn't matter uh, that's because the motion's applied, it reverts back to the original character. Don't stress, we'll leave them on there. Um, we got the double bounce. Now we apply the second walk cycle. We'll do another one. And the end. Okay. Oh, as an, as an interesting point, I'll show you. With the glasses, if we go to the timeline, um, you'll see... When the motion is first applied, he's got the glasses on. Say we didn't want the glasses on. Let's turn them off. Go back to frame one. Turn the glasses off. They'll turn off, but they turn back on. The naughty little devils. The glasses turn back on. You'll see that the motion wants all the sprites showing. We don't want that showing all the time. So all you need to do is to move forward to the, the keyframes for the glasses sprite. That's the S track move forward to them uh, and just make them invisible now when we go back and melvin walks his glasses will stay off now interestingly have a look at melvin's let's zoom in for a second oh wait i shouldn't do it there go to frame one let's zoom in for a second when melvin's walking even though i said the spring bones in his hair are quite subtle when we apply the walk cycle, that's I'm not happy with that. I don't I don't like the way the the hair that's too bouncy. Okay, don't like it. That's not the way it should be. If you don't if you've got one of my characters and you don't like the way the spring bones work, don't stress. Either turn them off or adjust the settings. Now I don't like the way the spring bones work there with this motion. So all you need to do is to select the hair. Okay. Select the hair, and you can manually change all your uh, sliders. But for me, probably, if we just go select the, the, the preset of stiff, now, when we apply a motion, it should not have the hair move as much. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Now you just get a nice, subtle little motion in it. So that... Is just about everything I can show you for Melvin. Uh, I hope you like this character. If you have any questions about this character or any of my content that I do, go to my Facebook page, send me a private message. I am always available. I'm always answering questions, whatever you need. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this character. I've got lots more coming. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.